Thanks for joining this episode of Blade Boys. We are going to do a summary of the men's events at the past few uh, Challenger Series or sort of those events, the, the pre-season events, uh, specifically Andrej Napala, Finlandia, and the 2015 Autumn Classic. So uh, at the Andrej Napala myth, we got our first view uh, in terms of an international competition of Jason Brown of the United States, the uh, the last year's uh, men's national champion. I was really impressed with where he's at. Uh, I think his long program specifically to the piano, uh, and there's also a symphonic or, or orchestral version that's worked in there, which is, is distinct and unique. I thought it is, it's a sensational program. It shows a different side of him, uh, that he can be you know, deep and uh, he can skate to more introspective music, which yeah. many people criticized him that he can't, that he's all razzle-dazzle and so forth. So uh, I, I say good on him in this sort of juncture between Olympic Games uh, in, in, and experimenting with a, a different side of himself artistically. And I know that the quads and the triple axles aren't there, which I'm pretty sure you're going to pounce on him and me any minute. But, uh, uh, you know, he's working you know. on the quads. It's, it's going to, you know, he seems like a skater that's sort of unlike a Patrick Chan, uh, who I remember from 2010, you know, from the 2010 season to the 2011 season, like, boom, he just, he just mastered that jump and then he could hardly miss it from then on. Uh, Jason Brown appears to be a skater who's going to take a long longer to get uh, to get the quad under him and he's got time to do that uh, and uh, you know it's quite possible that all the focus on the quad and the misses on the quad uh, then sort of started to plague his confidence and, and his mind in, in terms of the triple axles which he also struggled with at this particular event uh, but my fingers are crossed that uh, that eventually he's going to uh, to make big gains and and get that quad uh, underway and then be able to to sort of settle into the other big elements of the of the program he does fairly regularly two foot the axle, particularly the second axle. Mm -hmm. And this year's choreography has some really difficult footwork uh, and edge work going into those triple axles, which I'm not sure is the best idea if it's already a jump that you know you can struggle with. But he's obviously working hard on components and grade of execution for that. But anyways, I've I've talked enough. What did you think of Jason Brown, Beth? Uh Okay, well I'll start by saying like Jason Brown is one of those skaters that. He's an anomaly because he is a skater skater and you almost don't even care that he can't do the quad or uh, he's having issues with the axle because the quality of all of his of all his other elements I mean his spinning quality he is one of, he is probably the skater who achieves level 4 the most of the time on his spins um, yeah. his grade of execution is really great for every um, for for every jumping pass that isn't like the crazy hard jumping passes and he really knows how to deliver a performance, especially his free skate. I love the contrast between his the piano free skate this year uh, and his uh, epic uh, Tristan Isoli free, free skate from last year. Uh, I think that's what it was. Um, and uh, like it, it, it shows, again, a lot more nuance, a lot more sensitive side of Jason's skating. There's some nice like pauses and breaks, and he's not trying to cram all this choreography into what... Like, the program has a nice breathing sensibility to it and it, it has ebbs and flows in it and it's very easy to watch um and his great Gatsby short program I think is also perfect for him like he kind of has a tendency to do like a, a more showy short program but um like his juke program last year but this one show because it's great Gatsby I think shows off that character but also uh, with a greater sense of sophistication and style. So um, I think both are great vehicles for him uh, going on to the season. And now I'm going to get to the part that you, you called. <laughs> um, okay, so Jason, you need, you, you, like, it's not just about the quad. He, I'm starting to see, like, him having issues with the triple axle. And, like, an under-rotated fall on a triple axle in the short program like he like he had an issue with the second triple axle in the free program. I know he's he's trying a lot harder transitions and good for him. Like before he used to have a very long setup into his triple axle, but uh, I think him and Corey have worked really hard on like, hey, how can we make this more intricate because, you know, if if my hardest jump is going to be the triple axle, I want to make sure that it's the strongest element that it can be. Uh, the problem with that is that 
it, it's led to some inconsistency early on this season. And uh, I have full faith that Jason will regain that. Um, he, and again, like even if he two foots it, it'll still get pretty pretty decent points. The big issue, of course, is the quad toe, and that is something that will take time. He's he's, I hate to say it, but he's not even close to it right right now. Like he's he's downgrading that jump, and um, it's he's not really showing the improvement that he needs going into uh, the Grand Prix series. I mean. Sometimes, a light, as you said, a light bulb can switch on and then all of a sudden, boom, like a skater has a quad toe, uh, kind of like Nam, <laughs> as we'll mm-hmm. talk about in a bit. But, um, but for, for, uh, Kev- uh, for um, Kevin, for uh, Jason, Jason. It, it's, it's been a bit of a struggle getting that quad toe out there. But him, him and Corey, they have a plan. They're not going to listen to people like me. <laughs> you tell him he, and he's like... <laughs> They know they know what they have to do, and like, and as going back to my earlier point, it doesn't really matter when you're delivering skating at the level that Jason Brown is, and I think that's his main priority. He really wants to show people the quality of his skating first and foremost. And honestly, when he gets those jumps, he will be unstoppable. Like he will, like he, like like only the top guys like Yuzuru and Javier will and maybe Dennis as well will be able to compete with that because once he starts getting those jumps in there like he's already pulling 160 points when he's oh, yeah. when he's doing a downgraded quad and like uh, and doesn't land both axles and then has a has an issue on his trophy float so he's already getting like really high point totals um like even without delivering the technical goods as well as he can so once that once that kind of light bulb flicks on and he gets his quad and and I have full faith that he will because some t- it comes easier for uh, some skaters than others. I mean it's a it's it's a quad right like it's a freaking yeah, quad. And I, think, and I think I think Jason's you know struggle with the jump reminds us that this is a really difficult jump to master, and it almost frustrates me a little bit that there's so much focus now on the quad because I think a skater like Jason Brown should be a world champion. I mean, he's got, you just can't take your eyes off of him. And there's lots of others that, you know, come close to the podium or even arrive on the podium when you think, yeah, it was a, technically it was a strong skate, but it wasn't the most entertaining or, you know, exciting or powerful. Or much. And, and it, if and when he can get, you know, that quad under his belt, I think he'll be, I think he'll be unstoppable. And in terms of, you know, I'm sure he has season to season goals, but in terms of the long term goal of 2018 in Pyeongchang, hopefully, you know, three seasons away, he's got you know sufficient time to uh, to master the quad. I know, Myth, that you also had a couple other, uh, you know, or at least one other noteworthy skater from uh, from from Finlandia that you want oh, to yes. chat about, uh, or just, Andrej I, Napala, right? uh Yeah, from Andrej Napala. I just wanted to quickly mention uh, Mikhail Kolyada and. Just because he was injured last year, he was he was a junior skater last year, and he he was injured, but he had a really nice short program, and I just wanted to like congratulate him on that because uh, I think uh, behind Jason we had three uh, up and coming Russian skaters, Gordy uh, Gorshov and like Adyan uh, Pikaev. So those are all three uh, Russian junior moving senior. I mean Pikaev sort of had a senior season last year, but they're all skaters to watch potentially in the future because. Uh, again, like the the Russian men, there's there there isn't really a standout like how or like Plushenko was. Uh, Kovdun, he's do, doing really well, but I think there's a lot of potential for these up and comers uh, to really um, to really uh, kind of put some heat on him as well. Dmitry Aliyev is another skater on the Junior Grand Prix who's doing really well and landing quads and again has very good skating qualities. So. These are some other guys we should watch out for, and I just wanted to mention them because obviously they medaled at a Challenger Series event, which is great, great for their ranking and great for their confidence. So good for them, and uh, we look forward to seeing what they have to do, uh, what, what they have to bring to the table in the future. Yeah, so segueing from the Russian up and comers, the the Russian who arrived, uh, so to speak. At Finlandia Trophy uh, the following week was, of course, Konstantin Menshov, mm-hmm. uh, who claimed the gold medal uh, there, which is uh, superb for him. This is a skater who, of course, 
Smith is 32 years old. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and still, you know, chipping away and even has, you know, not only has a, a quad, but two, well, you, you land two quads in the free skate. Uh, and uh, I mean, I think it's remarkable that this guy, you know, has, has landed uh, on the top of the podium. I mean, no, it's not a Grand Prix event and it's not exactly the uh, the deepest field, but uh, the men's event uh, is in pretty uh, pretty thick at, uh, at Russian nationals in terms of making the world deep. The Russian Federation is fairly renowned for making what some might think are rather arbitrary choices that disregard the placements at Russian nationals. So, you know, he's got a tough road ahead of him and, and he hasn't been, uh, well, he might have been discouraged, but he hasn't been completely put off the sport. Yeah. Skate in Russia and uh, and he he's he was golden in Finlandia and I think that's amazing. Yeah, it was it was great for him to win this. Uh, this is our this is definitely his big like it's his first like major international gold I think. Um, and uh, his, I think so his too. yeah and it, like he was third at Euros, which is arguably more like prestigious. But this was a really important win for him because it established himself as. Uh, one of the favorites who can land, like he, he's one of the few men ever to have landed a quad sal and a quad toe uh, in, in the same program. So that in itself is really great, especially at his age. Um, and like, Boy. if you, if you check out our Nebo Horn recaps, we sort of talk about his programs a little more in depth. And, um, but yeah. I just think this was an important competition for him because uh, he established himself over Sergei Boronov, who had a really pretty solid short program. Uh, with uh, the quad toe and triple toe error on the triple toe, but like still a solid program. And um, Constantine, he uh, came out of the gates with two quads in his free skate, and that was that sort of set the tone for his win. And he he must be like really pleased with himself because Russian nationals is going to be a bit of a dogfight to get to worlds with only two spots, and with Kovtun being a huge favorite to get one of them, uh, Constantine. Uh, really needs to uh, show people that hey, I've got the goods uh, to actually like uh, put some heat on this guy and be, like re like establish myself as the Russian number one. Uh, and speaking mm -hmm. of number one, yeah. sorry, go ahead. Well, actually, well, uh, you know, well Borna won the. Uh, I'm thinking he, he. I know he came third last year at the Grand Prix final, which sort of also helped to sort of cement his uh, his presence on the world stage mm -hmm. and uh, his job, uh, out skating him at Flandia. Yeah, I think that's got a bit of a bit of, be a bit of a confidence boost for you know, but also uh, require that the Russians look at him maybe play and we'll see what he can do with his with his Grand Prix events. But my fingers are definitely crossed for him. Sweet. Yeah, and like and again I was saying like he's looking to establish himself as number one. In Russia, he was yep. Russian national champion a couple years ago, I think in 2010 or 2011. So he knows, like, he has what it takes to win. Uh, I mean, the field is a little more stacked right now, but he, like, he, I think he's starting to believe in himself, and um, that's starting to translate into results. So he has a good shot at uh, definitely getting Grand Prix medals and maybe even making the Grand Prix finals, sort of like how Voronov did. And, who knows if he skates as well as he can? Like, uh, if he does his two quads in a short program, he can get like ninety-two points. So that'll that that will set himself up potentially for a medal there. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's all in the future. But uh, and it's so early in the season. But it's a great start for Constantine, and we we look forward to seeing uh, if he's able to maintain this momentum throughout the season. So uh, also in the mix was American Adam Rapon, who uh, that same week uh, of the event, he came out of the closet. So perhaps he skated with a bit greater sense of self or confidence. I was particularly impressed with his short program, uh, choreographed to uh, Who Wants to Live Forever by uh, Queen. I thought it was powerful and he can really pull out like every note of, uh, of music. Uh, and I think think even you know aesthetically his his sort of his silver hair uh and the black uh fitted costume it was just it, it created a really neat silhouette uh to portray that music and i was i was quite impressed by it yeah i think this was a strong competition for uh adam he had a he didn't have a great short program and that was greatly in part due to um the uh inclusion of the quad lots and 
kudos to him. Like that, that is an incredibly difficult element. Only um, Brandon Ross has ever completed it, and Boyang Jin this year has a chance to like be like. And I think, and I certainly think he will, because he has a very consistent one. He has a chance to be uh, the second guy to land a clean quad lutz. But Adam Rippon's going for it too. Again, the problem is like with as with Jason Brown's quad toe, he's not he's downgrading it. Um, and it's okay if you under rotate a jump and still stay upright under rotating and falling is still, I guess, okay, but you can't downgrade a jump and, de and definitely you can't downgrade it and fall because then the jump is only worth about like 3.9 points and then 2.9 after your deduction. So like at yeah. that point, it's like he yeah. could have, he could have done a double Lutz and it would have been worth about the same amount of points as a downgraded quad Lutz with a fall. So I think he needs to start playing strategy because Adam actually could have won this competition um, if not for that quad lutz error. Um, even if he had made it a triple lutz, like with with good grid of execution, that would have got him, um, you know, probably about four four more points ish. And another thing is that that quad lutz fall it probably rattled him for the triple axle and as, and also rattled him uh, for the combo later on. So yeah, so well, this, and, and this his, was, his it was triple a bit axle. And, and Sorry, I just and I just was gonna say his triple axle entrance is so swingy mm -hmm. that you know every time he goes into that triple axle, I'm like, oh god, is he gonna land this or not? So uh, yeah, no, sorry. I... Yeah, 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 no, it's 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 true. Like um, in the short program, it was swingy, but in the free program, however, he did land two really uh, nice triple axles. Unfortunately, got a single toe on one of them uh, in an effort to combo it. But but still, like he he showed that um, at least like he can land his triple axles, and he uh, he delivered a really good program. And I think the judges are starting to sort of get swing back into his favor. Like he he was once like a, a, a silver medalist at Skate America, so he he knows how to like compete with the big boys. And uh, I think if he plays his layout a bit smarter, he has done a quad toe in the past and he should maybe consider going back to that. Um, but uh, good for him for still going for it. But I think now he really needs to consider, okay, I've, I've tried it in this competition. It's not working out. Um, now, is it smart to attempt it in my Grand Prix series? Or do I do just a triple Lutz, a beautiful Tano triple Lutz? Like, if he opens with that, that's like a statement, right? Because it, that's a beautiful, easy jump for him. Um, mm. and, and then skate a clean program, and that'll set me up for a free skate. And then maybe in the free skate, he does take a risk and try the, the quad Lutz instead. Uh, but I don't know. I feel like it's, a, it's too much of a gamble for him at this point, and he really needs to consider uh, the points that it's costing him and uh like the risk and reward aspect of it and i well yeah and i think not yeah not just the points that that actual that just that specific jump costs him but then when it plays on his mind if he doesn't land it and and how it impacts the rest of the program i agree with you that it's something to uh, to look at and assess and and you know maybe come up with a different strategy mm -hmm. uh can we talk about the autumn classic? Because oh uh, yeah, well uh, be before that, we need we also just need to quickly talk about Sergey Voronov. Uh, as we yeah. mentioned before, like uh, he came third, <clears throat> and you know he was third at the Grand Prix final last year. So this was not his best free skate for him. It was actually a bit of a disastrous uh, free skate for him, and it's similar to what happened at Worlds last year. He had a he had a solid short program at Worlds last year, and then. It just fell apart. So he needs to sort of get his game on when it comes to his free skate because the short program is pretty solid. Um, I don't understand, like, why everyone's doing Muse now. I mean, apparently Muse is everybody's Muse <laughs> right now in skating. <laughs> yeah. like, every and I say this as a huge Muse fan, uh, but I'm kind of like, it's, yeah, it's yeah. this weird, like, okay, like, I'm, I'm, like, I don't know if, like, it, once lyrics were introduced, it seemed... The go-to was me, right? But um, that being said, uh, I do I, I do kind of like Voronov's Muse program. I prefer uh, his uh, programs from last year, actually. But uh, we'll see how they develop over the season. But I just want to kind of give him a shout-out. Yeah, it seems um, it's either, 
Yeah, this this season it seems it's either Muse or like Golden Oldies, and I feel like <laughs> someone's put the word out that you know, with worlds in Boston, you know, the Americans will love this. So, oh, uh, yeah. yeah, it's it's like we're just we're just we're just doing American, cl- yeah, Elvis everywhere and like Gatsby and like it's it. Totally, totally. I mean, you know, it of, of course you you try to play to your home crowd like Solbova and Klimov did, um, you know, with their Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. Oh wait, we're we're Worlds is in Shanghai. We we had no idea. Like, yeah, like yeah, we totally. we just, we oh, just not, <laughs> sorry. Totally. But we're not showing up anyways because we're playing poor sports. Well, no, they were they're in a rebuilding phase, and we will get to that in our Paris recap. But the 2015 uh, uh, Autumn Classic that Skate Canada held, uh, where Yuzuru Hanyu and Nam Nguyen, uh they they went head to head, and I mean Nam Nguyen with a new trick. I thought he was going to do his quad Zaukao in a short program because he n- nailed that about four, I think four times cleanly last season. Like it was, it was a very consistent jump considering he just started with it. But then he comes out with like a quad toe, triple toe. And I was initially like, cause he actually did that with such ease that I'm like, did he just do a triple, triple. toe, t- triple yeah. toe? And I'm like, yeah. cause he's been so fast. But then obviously on replay, I'm like, I'm like, oh no way. Of course he did like a quad toe. And then at the end, he kind of was like that. I'm like, oh, like, I guess he did do a triple and like, a, I don't know what happened. Um, but no, he, he skated a clean program and um, his free skate was not as good. I mean, I like he had the, the air with the spin at the end and um, he, he uh, had the air on his quads. Um, well, his, his first quad, I should say. Um, but apparently his quad toe is like really good now. <laughs> Uh, but good for him for like getting the quads, getting two different quads into his program and debuting, uh, his short program with a quad, which, you know, he had yet to do. And, uh, he absolutely nailed it. I think his, his skating is, shows a little more maturity this year. It's still not quite the smoothness and quality of skating skills as some of the other guys, but it, it is a big step up. And I think if he delivers consistent performances, he can definitely improve um, his scores and be a threat for uh, making the Grand Prix final, which I, I, I'm going to predict that he's going to make it because he's, he's clutch and he's, uh, he's Mr. Spicy. So he's also uh, consistently spicy. <laughs> so we're, yeah. we, we got some high hopes for uh, Nam. But obviously he couldn't win this competition because he was up against User behind you. Um, yeah. Who's... Let me wait. Let me talk about Nam first. So. Oh I, yeah. Go ahead. My go ahead. sense is, you know, I know he's trying to, or it looks, it appears, anyways, that he's trying to expand his sort of maturity uh, in his programs. I wasn't yet sold, uh, or I'm not yet sold on the music and his ability to sort of skate up to it. And the music also just didn't have, to me, a ton of sort of depth to it. It's. I, I just wasn't I, I wasn't drawn into the performance in the program, and I mm. feel as though to to master or to land what he needs to do technically with the quads, he's really quite in the zone, and then all of a sudden at a few moments, um, and I thought the the vest in the short program. I mean, I like the you know he's got sort of the the blousy white shirt and the in the free skate, and I thought okay, he's really going for something you know like a, a very cool operatic sort of different look. The short program though, he's got like a vest like he's going to do Mac the Knife like Patrick I, Chan is, I, I, and I, think, I didn't think it really worked with the the music. I think he went to Han Yan and raided his vest closet <laughs> because yeah, totally. because that. That vest, like he should not invest in that vest. Okay, <laughs> like he need, totally, he, totally. I like I think it it made him look a little bit uh, clunky. And actually, um, I think uh, user Hanyu's free skate uh, outfit also looked a little bit um, bulky or whatever. Um, because it, I don't know, these guys they have like they're kind of very slim guys, and you see them put on this like like layers right like like totally. i know i know i know it's cold and ice rink but like <laughs> you don't need so many layers and and i don't know that best that was that best wasn't doing it for me for for nam but uh the program was though and that's the most important thing because you know a vest is a lot easier to change than yeah than Sorry. revamping your entire program <laughs> choice but yeah uh, i thought but uh, yeah. yeah and on uh, on to you zero i thought uh, um 
So speaking of person about his costumes, he's got a little bit of like peekaboo action like happening on the sides oh, in his short program. Did you know that? He's got like the gold lame. It's for the Japanese button. fans, yes. You know. <laughs> I was like, what is happening? It's like everything is happening in that costume. A bit of blousy, a bit of peekaboo, and you know, a massive gold lame Karamund. Johnny you know. Weir would be so proud. It would be Plus. <laughs> yes. Plus. Well, John, John, he'd need a bit of mink on the collar <laughs> somewhere that really to tick that box for Johnny Weir. Oh but, well, uh, you know, it's it's like it's like, you know, Coco Chanel says, like just remove one accessory and just leave the rest, right? <laughs> <laughs> totally. Um but, but hey, you know, he he is an eccentric skater and it, like I mean, whatever that that works for him, and and that's not and honestly, like I, that's not what I look at when he skates. What I'm looking at is like the qualities of his skating, and I think he's he uh, with this short program, he has some very nice nuanced uh, skating um, and yep. uh, some really beautiful edge work. Uh, his arms, I still think, could be a little more finesse. Sometimes they're a little floppy, especially going into his triple axe. So he's just kind of like thing and then going around i i think he could but, just but that have a bit more axle, hole but yeah but the the spread eagle into the triple oh, axle yeah out of the triple axle plus threes across the plus board the, plus three well that one yeah. plus two but that, that should got, be a plus four that should yeah. be a plus four like that that to me is like that, that was killer that, that's a perfect triple axle unfortunately totally like yeah. Like, what a sign to Patrick Chan. Sorry, buddy, if you're struggling in a triple axel. I'm now doing it in and out of a spread eagle. Like, yeah. it was sensational. Yeah, I read it. I read a stat the other day, and it was that um, Hanyu has a, a landed something like 92 or 94% of his triple axels of, like, all time. Like, getting, like, like po positive GOE on it. Like, th that's a huge stat. That's saying, like... If I do twenty triple axles, nineteen of them will get like like positive scoring. So it's like a guaranteed nine points, like every yeah. single time. It's he the does. it's the it's the quads that that Hanyu goes down on. I mean, they're tough and and yeah. losses get go and down that, on them. But I find that with Yuzuru, not only does he go down on a quad, but he really sells. Like some most skaters sell the landing, he sells his falls. Like he oh his falls comes are down so hard, and I actually think. You know the 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 incidents that he heard, and he's like he's it's like he's having a little tantrum on the ice. And I think like I know they oh. skate together. That's a horrible habit to pick up. Like stop selling your mistakes. Get up. Keep going. I don't think I don't think it's intentional. I think I think it's um, because he is going in with so much speed that it's and because he is such a slim guy that if something goes wrong, it's very hard for him to just easily get up. But yeah, sometimes it happens. Like. I mean, it's always nice to see a skater smile when they get up, but like, at at some point, it's 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 a bit it's a bit frustrating, especially when you see the judges, and this is a bit of a gripe, um, in the short program, like his component scores were were still so high. Um, he, I mean, he's he's way better than the rest of the field. Like he's mm. he's vastly uh, superior to all of them. But I think, like. If you have a major error, like uh, like you can't be you can't be getting like ninety what was it ninety three points or something like that. I mean that's like that that's that's way too high and it's and it, it's like why why should the other guys even show up if they need to like skate like three quads lights out and then even still like they like they still don't even come close to like Nam skated perfectly and he only got like what like I think like eighty six points or something which is which is great like it's a huge score for him but yeah. that being said like under 6.0 well, I think I think the transitions that U0 incorporates in his program and the components are pretty sensational oh no no it the, like his programs and his quality of skating is is way better than everybody else I just think like like judges need to be mindful of the fact that like hey if you if you have if you have an error that should affect your component score especially like in something like uh Hanyu's free skate where uh he still got I think 92 component scores and had a fall and had like and, and had other minor errors like on his triple axle and stuff mm. so like I mean good on him for like still managing to crank out the series and um his quad Saoka at the beginning was like one of the best I've ever seen him do normally he has like a bit of a shaky exit but that one was great but apparently his quad toes this competition both of them uh, they uh, they just they just kind of failed them, and he was landing them in practices. So, like, right. it's not like he's experiencing a ton of difficulty with them. But I do recall him saying in an interview that now the quad sack is actually easier and more consistent for mm. him than the quad toe. So, 
I'm kind of wondering why he's trying two quad toes and one quad sal, but yeah, yeah. But he knows what he's doing. I mean, his again, his his technical content is like absolutely insanely through the roof, especially if he does everything cleanly. Like with all, with the litany of errors that he. Well, I don't I don't want to say a litany of errors, but like with with. Like, well, you just said it. <laughs> with for him, it's a litany of errors. I mean, right. I mean, it's not it's not as bad as like some of his programs from last year, which were unfortunate, but like. Like he's had he, like you can't make that many errors and and still get like that that high score. I mean, we've seen it in the past with skaters from like Chan to like Costner to the Germans at like the Olympic, like it or the Germans at Worlds where uh, I think they came second and Duhamel and Radford came third. But, yeah, twenty fifteen. Yeah, but the judges need to start holding these pe- uh, these skaters accountable, even if they are like so much better than the rest of the field and i think um i don't know we'll see we'll see how it goes throughout the season but they need to start they need to they need to give like the next level of skaters some hope that like hey if you're going to compete you you still have a chance to win if you do your best if like the favorites they falter but if the favorites falter and you do your best and you still don't even come close to like matching their scores that's uh, there's a problem with that system, and uh, that's just my little two cents on that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, I think that's that really summarizes our analysis of the the men's event at Andrej Napala, Finlandia, and the Autumn Classic. There's a lot there, a lot of content, a lot of great skaters, uh, and and some up and comers, and some established skaters, and some uh, some glimpses at some of the first skates like Yuzuru Hanyu and so forth. So, thanks for listening to this episode. Keep watching uh, future episodes and follow us on Facebook. Follow us on tw- like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Uh, subscribe to our uh, YouTube channel, and hopefully, uh, we'll be providing you with the sort of analysis and information that you're looking for to understand the figure skating season. Great. Well, until our next episode, these are the Blade Boys signing off. Thanks for watching. Thanks for watching.